hands on it. Now you've been seeing them. Everybody's been having a mask on. Exactly. Well, not well. That's the thing. Not everybody though. Not everybody. Not everybody. But now they're willing to take the two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine. Right. And see, the thing is, it's funny because you have the Andy Reid or the Chiefs coach who had the whole little, the whole little uh, mask yeah. clear thing. That's perfect. I can still yell. I can still say my thing. And it and gets fogged up at the bottom so y'all can't see what I'm talking about. Right. So, I, you know, there's not like the, you can't figure out a way. And I get it. When you're mad and you're sitting here on the field and you're full of emotion, yes, you're going to want to pull that down and say some things like that. All I'm saying is even if you do pull that down, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're conscious of it and covering your mouth or doing something of that effect, Come on now. But some of these coaches, it's like they're saying, some of these coaches are like, look, I'm a coach in the NFL. I'm getting paid X amount of money. Fines 500000 or, you know, 100000 or whatever to, to a coach like John Gruden, who's making, uh, what, hundred mil every 10 years? That like, money for him. Right. So he's like, yeah, yeah, you can have that. That's fine. You want to see my face again? Go ahead. Here, take it but again. But they also got to realize that because this is such a serious situation that you are putting your players at risk. Mm hmm and Cam Newton, you know, how are these players getting it? They have to figure out the route. If the coaches aren't wearing their masks, the coach could have gave it to them, anything. We have to realize that the rules are set in place to try to make it safe for the players. Obviously, something in the Tennessee organization is not working. Mm -mm. Mm -mmm. Coaches have to adapt just like the players got to adapt. They playing in bubbles. They, they, yeah. they making sure that they're with their family only so they can make sure that everything goes smoothly for this season. Mm -hmm. Everybody from the top needs to be held accountable down. Yeah. Now the coaches aren't invisible. They got to be doing every, what everybody else is doing. Now, and, and now this is what I will say. And, and again, I know we had just uh, earlier talked about the Lakers. Shout out to the Lakers. Glad you guys won your title. I got to do it, man. That's how it was for him, man. I'm glad they did it. But I really feel like the NBA bubble was exactly what people needed to see. The NFL is not bubbling like the NFL, in like the NBA. The NBA, they made sure it was a select number of people here. And if you went elsewhere, you had to be quarantined. And did you hear about anybody, you know, getting COVID and all that? No. They were in that bubble. They did what they had to do. Exactly. Well, yeah, and... and, and uh, uh, our our, our uh, director just also said, hey, if the world did the same thing, maybe we wouldn't have 100K deaths. But that's neither here nor there. We're not going to go down 200K, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. So, I, you know, honestly, it's a serious subject. At this particular point, we've covered COVID at least three or four episodes. Okay? This is serious. And, and we just how we take it seriously – they got to take it seriously. And if you don't, and I get it, you're, and, and maybe maybe with the fines, maybe the fines aren't doing it. The penalty is not going to do it. Even the forfeiture of a game maybe won't do it. You know what I mean? So maybe it is the draft picks, which it has to be that extreme measure to say, hey, you got to listen or else. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, they're not listening after that. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say because this is, we, we were seeing how serious this is. And maybe it's, and I hate to say this, but maybe like in the rest of the world, it's going to take somebody passing from this for us to sit here and really take it. I hate to say it, but a lot of times, especially in sports, so I've noticed whenever the almighty dollar comes in in front of people's eyes, they don't really see much anything else. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I like Anton said, all the backups and the folks on the practice squad, you just have so many people to account for. It's so hard to be in the bubble in football. And, and I, I don't think this is going to get any better. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I am hoping upon hope that we can finish the season. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, if we finish the season and out of 30 teams, we have like 16, would everybody go to the playoffs? Like, I, I, it, it, at a certain point, especially now with the DAC injury, because with the NFC East now in shambles, because that you were that was our only hope of the NFC East doing anything with Saquon out. Now I'm kind of like, you know, some of us are like, well, we don't really what we don't have anything to shoot for. 
I mean, you know what I mean? Like, so and with Tennessee, they're undefeated. So I understand how that could become an issue, and they're trying to push it. But think about if one of our four teams got it, like got somebody with COVID. What would we do? And I heard, so uh, Anton was saying by, by playoffs, we're going to have half a league. Yes. They're actually trying to do a weird new playoff system where it could potentially solve this problem where it doesn't matter your record. It's just kind of, I guess, areas. I, I got to read more into it, but it was it was very weird what they were trying to do, where it was like, it doesn't matter your record. It's like the top of each division or something. And I don't know. But it was, it basically opened the door for teams that might not have a winning record or might be like, obviously, like one of us who's going to be 6-10 and 10 or 7-9 and nine or 8-8. Eight and eight. And it's, it's opening the door for them. But that's not good competition. Because there's no point of us getting into the playoffs and we're going to get it waxed in the first game. Like, yeah. so I, I don't know. I, I don't, again, I don't know. That's just speculation right now. I don't know if that's going to go through, but it's going to be crazy. And especially like Anton saying, if we don't have but half the teams, what are we doing? And, and, and what, what if it becomes a Patrick? What if it becomes the Chiefs? What if it's the Ravens? What if it's the Seahawks and the Sa- or the Saints? What if it's one of these teams? I mean, the Tennessee. But you can tell. You can tell the disciplined organizations. Like for, you yeah. said, Seahawks, they cut a rookie for having his sneaking his girlfriend into the freaking exactly. hotel. Yep. Some yep. of these teams are cutthroat, not playing no games with you. No. Well, I guess it also depends on player. You know, you know, they they used to talk about you know when when somebody used to mess up in the locker room or whatever. Certain players, you'll get kicked off. You know, and other players, you know, you fall asleep during a practice and they just wake you up and they say, oh, I want to wake up. You know what well, I'm right. But it's it's who we take serious. Who has to do it? Everybody's yeah. got to take it serious from the owners down because you got to think. You're coming in contact with all of these players. We got to take it serious, just like the NBA did. Like Anton said, it's too many players to lock in a bubble. <laughs> but you make enough money that you could keep these these teams in their own yep. hotel. Right, right. These hotel the businesses thing. are suffering right now. They'll take a whole NFL, NFL, uh, 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 NFL team for a exactly, season. exactly. You gotta do and what you, you gotta you, do if you want to make the team. If you want to make the league work, you gotta do what you gotta do. But I can tell that some of these franchises are just different. They're not. Right. No Belichick player is gonna be out there partying on a Saturday night, turning up at the club. You just right. have to see it. Right, and that and so then that makes you think. How did Cam get it? Because Cam from the Panthers, oh, that's easy. He was out partying. He was out doing something, blah, blah, blah. But Cam under Belichick, you know Belichick's not letting him out of his sight. Nope. You know that. So. True. I mean. True. They were saying that the problem is it's not the, it could not be the players. It could be their players' household. You only made the players sign. They're going back home. To their wives who are taking their kids to whatever activities the kids right, got to do. Right. Uh, grandma, grandma, come, grandpa, camp, grandpa coming over. You got other people in your family that you got to worry about. Right. So if the players right. got the contract of staying away and doing what they need to do, but that doesn't account for everything else that your family has to do in your household. Exactly. Exactly. And here's the here's the other thing that David was saying, and he uh, is basically, hey, they're adults. You know, you're adults. You make your own decisions. Absolutely. I can tell you all day long, Janae, I, you know, after this show, I want you to go home. Don't leave anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't do anything until the next show and blah, blah, blah. But you're an adult. You got to do what you got to do and vice versa. Absolutely. So I, I completely agree with that. It, sometimes they're like, hey, okay, well, this isn't a problem. I'm just going over to the store. But I'm them as over- adults, they have to remember they have a bigger picture. Yep. Yep. I look at it. I'm pretty sure though some of those Tennessee players where I go, I'm adult, I'm an adult, I can do what I want to do. And now your whole franchise has to sit out two weeks in a row. Yeah. Because y'all can't just get it together. Yeah. Like it's just not just by happenstance that it happened that way. These teams, some of these teams are just, you gotta get it together. You gotta control your organization or just don't participate. Yep. You don't yeah. have to participate. Nobody's yeah. forcing you to do this, but if you want to make it work and you want to play the game, like you had this, um, I know it's kind of off topic, but they had that fighter 
Javante Davis or whatever his name is. Mm -hmm. He just was talking about, you know, well, I'll catch COVID, you know, for my fans. It's like, what are you talking about? Nobody wants right. you to catch COVID for your fans. So you can have fans there. I can watch you on pay-per-view right here from my house and be safe. Right. And but still be good. Catch COVID for your fans. We right. need you to do your job so we can continue to watch it. Yeah. I don't know about you, but the Cowboys seem like they're probably the most fans in the stadium, right? Yeah, I saw that. I don't think that's safe. I saw that. Me looking at it, it's the first thing that everybody noticed. And I'm a fan, and I'm like, ah, I don't think you should have that many people in the audience. You yeah. just start watching the Steelers have barely anybody in the stands. And then you go and you you do you, you push it just you gotta be safe. I think. Yes, you still want your – your team is still going to be the Cowboys. People are still going to watch you from their TVs. But we're in a whole different world now. We all have to understand that we're in a whole different world now. It's just yeah. not held 21,000 people in the yep. stands. We're not ready for that yet. No, we're Talk not. The and you can see – And all of that. Right, and you see – and you, when they pan to the shots of the fans, they didn't have masks on. At, at least they might have had it on their, their chins or on their ears. They did not have it. And I'm like, are you serious? So you got all them cheering, and it's just going straight in the atmosphere. It's, some of it's not worth it. Let's just play the game. I'm yeah. content. The very first weekend of football, all the people that I know watching football was excited to do it at home. It didn't even matter yeah. as long as the game could be played. Stop yes. taking the risk from the fans. We want to watch. We right. want support, but 21,000 fans, I don't even think we're ready for that yet. And we're sitting there talking about bubbles and all that. I, I no. don't think that all the teams, including my own, are are making smart decisions when it comes to this season of football. We have to – let's just get through the first season. I know it's hard. Let's just get through the first season, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be yeah. all right. That and, and, and that's it. That's it to a T, honestly, because – Guys, if we don't stop this, if we don't get through these next couple weeks, we're not going to last till Thanksgiving. We're not. You know what I mean? Like, if we don't get through this time where we're listening to the protocols of not only the NFL, but the whole, whole country is trying to do these same protocols with the mask and the whole nine. Guys, if we don't do this right now. We're not going to have a season matter. next year. Y'all worried about now. Yeah. We won't even finish this season if we don't worry right. about it. It does not matter. None of this, any of the stuff we're talking about won't matter if we don't get this under control. That is the truth. Dave, right. That's the truth. That's the facts of the matter. We have to get it. In. It's still here. Come on. Come that's on, guys. That's dirty right there. We don't even need to say down and dirty today. There that, it is. That bit of advice that Sean yeah. just said. We got to take it serious so we can finish the season. We already see the Tennessee Titans, who are an undefeated team, not yeah. being able to play two weeks in a row and how they're trying to fit these games in now. We got a Tuesday night game tomorrow, guys. Yeah. We're already yeah. putting games in. And honestly, I think me and David and, and you talked about this. We should be doing that anyway. All the games should not be played on Sunday. Right. All the games right. should not be played on Monday and Thursday. We need to start spreading out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. It'll it'll change all of the dynamic of having to rush, cross contaminating, all this stuff because you still mm -hmm. gotta practice in these facilities. Right. We can do it. We just gotta be smart about it. The season can last, but we gotta be smart about it. That's the down and dirty for today. Now we gotta go ahead and do our picks, Sean. So for tonight, who you going with? Den Denver and New, New England. All right, I'm going New England with uh, no Cam Newton. No, yeah, New England with Cole, no Cam Newton. I'm going and, and I, hey, look, I'm I'm, su I'm supporting them Broncos. I'm going for them Broncos. I saw what Hoyer and them boys tried to do, and then I saw Stidham got in the game, and they still couldn't get it done. I'm going with the Denver Broncos. I know they don't have a starting quarterback wow. and a backup. They don't have running receivers back. I, I look. Hey, but that the, hey, but that quarterback is not bad. The little rookie right. is not bad. Right. So I'm going Denver. I, I'm going Denver. I'm gonna say 21 20. Wow. Yeah. It's gonna wow. come down to it. What, right, what you, you got? What? And I'm I'm always gonna be the advocate. I'm gonna go ahead and go against you. I'm gonna go say New England only because 
this quarterback that is playing tonight, I believe that he was destined to be the backup when Tony Romo packed up his bags from Boston. <laughs> this guy got his un unpacked his suitcase and was like, this is my home. And then a guy named Cam Newton came and took his job. So I'm hoping <laughs> that the boy shows up. Okay. New England is going to win with the backup quarterback that was supposed to be the starting quarterback. New England's going to win. <laughs> I'm going to say 24-17, New England. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Denver, Denver's quarterback is uh, uh, Rippin. Brett Rippin. It's the, new, actually, the, it's new, not, the new one, the new kid. He's yeah, good. It's his, yeah, it's his nephew. It's his nephew. And so, it's funny, before the game last week. It's whose Brett, nephew? The, our, our, uh, the, the last last Rettis quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Really? We're almost done. We're almost finished up. Yeah, the, yeah Mark Rippin. The letter rip, Super Bowl 26. I did not uh, know that. Yeah. So, Brett Rippin, he played at uh, Boise State. Uh, he, had, he had a couple good years in there, but he was definitely a backup. But he, he looked he good. played last week. He played very he good. good. He led them to a victory. Absolutely. He so, hey, I, hey, I, I like it. So, yeah, hey, hey, thank you for bringing that up, Anton. Now I'm definitely going Denver. Let's go. Rippin all day. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but who who you got in the Chiefs one? All right, in the uh, Chargers and Saints. All right, Chargers and Saints. I'm going for the Chargers. I want the Chargers to beat the Saints only because I like the direction the Chargers are heading in. I don't know if Tyrod is coming back this week. Did they make that announcement yet? I uh, don't think, right? I think it's Herbert. I think Herbert's got the start. So he's automatically got the start or, or, or Tyrod's not better yet? Uh, from what I heard, Herbert's, Herbert's got the job right now. Wow. So, so I don't know. They punctured Tyrod's lung. It wasn't his fault. Man. A, okay, but I'm, I'm still going with it. I feel like Herbert did a good job when he had to come in. Um, last week, I don't know whether he was all that, but he did He did okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that this week, with this, the way Saints are going, I don't really know. I just don't. I can't just automatically say Saints is taking over. So... Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Chargers. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to – yeah. I'll say 31, uh, 31, 34 high-scoring game. Chargers. I can see I can see that. I, and Michael Thomas potentially comes back. It's questionable. If he gets back in the game, I, I got to disagree. I got to go Saints. If Michael Thomas plays, the Michael Saints Thomas are going to – not playing tonight. Day. Michael Thomas oh, is not stop. playing. He got into uh, a fight with um one of his uh players this week in practice, and they are punishing him, and they will sit Michael Thomas tonight. Got right, into a well, fight. Not even just a regular argument. I guess he punched the dude in his face. Oh, it, got, it, got, it got physical. Michael Thomas will not play in tonight's game. It has already been announced. They are punishing him. For whatever fight happened this weekend with his own teammate. Okay. I, I need to then address uh, Gregory Turner, the uh, Miami fan. Uh, I'm playing him in fantasy, and I definitely think I started Thomas. So, you win. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, God. They just no. announced it. They announced it today. Oh, God. I definitely – I definitely – I feel bad because I, I, I didn't even know that New England was on a bye week, so I still had Edelman in. Right. So, yeah, they said – they just said um, – David and them were saying that – or Anton said that – or, no, they, yeah, David said that they pushed the game to Sunday, the Denver-New England game. I thought they were playing tonight, though. I thought they were still having the two, but maybe for the COVID test, they pushed it back. Probably. I don't know. All right. Well, it is, it is what it is. Um, yeah. That, damn. Winning it's a close like game, David said. I like that. Hey, 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 Anton's going with me. Chargers by a field goal, 34-31. I think so. Chargers Yo, by Dave, a field goal. David, David, you still think they're going to win without Michael Thomas? I got it. Uh, you're, all, you're always – you were winning with, without Michael Thomas when he was hurt. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. Y'all got As long as I got Kamara on that backfield, you good. Right, right. So look, let me let me take this time since we already we already did our down dirty. So I'm gonna take this time to address it. I, I gotta commend you for last week. You you sat there and and you told you saw your cousin Sam was on here. Sam, and you, you, 
you let them know you apologized because you said that the Cow- that the Steelers weren't going to be great and they did great. I went one step further. I, I hit up some people talking about how the Steelers weren't going to do nothing. And then Chase Claypool scores four touchdowns this week. <laughs> so I got I to gotta shout out all the Steelers guys. Where does Claypool kid come from, man? Yo, Notre Dame. I don't know. Even... And, and um, Eagles. I'll shout out your little uh, miracle worker, Falcom. Right. Where do these right. players come from? No namers. You know what I mean? No namers are showing up. I hope you fantasy draft people looking at these little no namers, these rookies coming out. Fulcum yeah. wasn't even. They did. They man. They talked about Fulcum. That kid yeah. got picked up by a team. I don't even know what team it was. Got drafted by a team. Didn't get to play with them. Got picked up by another team. Didn't get to play with them. The Eagles are the third team to get him since he's been drafted. Started off on the practice squad by game four. He got into the game and look at game five. Look at him now. I don't, I, but all right, no is, this, is that, is that just a fluke game though? I mean, not against the Steelers, not against the Steelers, no. not True. the way the Steelers have been playing. That ain't no fluke game. The a, said fluke. Don't they sleep fluke. on the Eagles. Yeah. Well, I'm not sleeping on anybody in our division except, you know, us, because uh, we're fully asleep. You're still in it. You're still in it, Sean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, on our division, we're definitely in it. We just, hey, as long as we have our three, three-headed three monster at quarterback, maybe our two-headed monster. Actually, yes. Let me discuss it. No doubt in 30. You have a one-headed talk- monster. Don't, don't get it yeah. twisted. You're, you're all, your head is only it. one, Sean. Let, no, let me talk about it, okay? Straight up. <laughs> Dag on. Washington, you're terrible. Yeah, absolutely terrible. First of all, the Wayne has his best game. Those 314 yards. Yes, no touchdowns. Yes, we lost. We played the one of the best teams in the league, and he put up 17 points. He did everything. Not only do you disrespect him and do like you've been doing the last 10 years and 20 years in Washington, for that matter, you put him on the bench, and you make him the third string for a guy, one guy, that's completely garbage that got knocked out in the game. Third string. And the second guy who has one fully capable leg. I knew you was going to feel some type of... <laughs> one leg. Are you serious, Washington? You know what? I knew you were going to feel some type of way. And I do have something to say about that because I feel, I feel like that's your problem. Yeah. The Redskins never want to give somebody an opportunity to... Ever. It's his first freaking full year. Let him play. Let him play. First of all, didn't you guys beat somebody who's actually a contender this year? I believe you guys beat the Cardinals. Am I right? Yeah. No, no, no. We, who, no, we beat uh, uh, Philly. We found it. Philadelphia. So you beat the Philadelphia. Well, dang, I guess I'm, then my point is not made. I thought I was going to say you guys beat a contender, but. But you beat the Eagles. You beat the Eagles. All the other teams that you guys have played this year. And see, see this is my problem. We are so of what have you done for me yesterday, Lee? Yes. yes. I just yes. don't understand. Okay. Even with the Atlanta situation of them firing their head coach, look who they played. Yeah. They played all heavy hitters except us. Now, us, you can blame that game. You can say, all right, you guys let a 30-point lead come back, whatever. But at, but Atlanta had played the Seahawks, Chicago, two undefeated teams. I just want you to see the hat is upside down right now. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this is this is what it's doing to me. <laughs> Haskins should have finished out the school the the, the year. Haskins should have finished out the year. Yes, in the, at least the next four games, we literally play the Giants twice and you guys. And now, <laughs> now with you guys having Dalton, we have a shot. <laughs> I get it. Just look at it. Did you see it? Did you see? I don't want to take the time to build up players. <laughs> we don't want to do anything. I just we want to care. We don't no, care. It was beautiful, though. It was beautiful yeah. to see Alex Smith come out. 
his wife and his kids. I mean, that was beautiful. His wife was crying. Nobody thought look, Alex Smith was gonna come back. <laughs> look, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you how how uh, bad we did yesterday. My mom, when she saw Alex Smith, she saw his wife, and his wife had the poncho and everything on. The daughter had short sleeves and shorts on. <laughs> and my mom said, that girl needs to put some clothes on. How you gonna be a poncho? <laughs> Sound like a mama. Any, any mama that saw the kids' outfits, they would've been like, all right, right. give me a little bit more clothes on. It's a little cold. Both the, both the boys are fully covered up, but the daughter was just like, woo, woo doing her thing. And I was like, Mom, I was like, the game is on, Mom. She's like, there ain't nothing here to watch. I, I want to watch the fans. He came so, back. I can't even imagine, Mom. Congratulations, Alex Smith, for, for overcoming your injury. They counted you out. They said that you were gone, retire, and you came back. Look, look, I, hey, hey, let, don't, don't get it twisted. I absolutely loved Alex playing. I'm glad he got in. Apparently, that was the goal. Uh, probably, the whole season. You know what? If we're gonna be honest, if and, you know count, out the leg situation, no, I'm not saying that Alex Smith's legs are better than Haskins, but I will say his arm is better than Haskins. I'll go one step further. I'll go Alex Smith with a with one leg is better than Kyle Allen and Dwayne Haskins put together. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Okay, <laughs> That's exactly where I'm at right now. So y'all could be all right with Alex Smith. Let's not just count out Alex Smith. Y'all could be all right. Look, listen. Bottom line is this: our defense. I I, I really love oh, our defense. Come Sheldon, go Ravens. Yo, I, oh, <laughs> what up, Sheldon? Yeah, the Ravens is doing good. Hey, but let's not look, forget they didn't play nobody important this week, so we ain't right. talk about y'all. Right. Hey, look. I, hey, I love our defense. I love Chase. I love what our D line's doing. Kerrigan's kind of been absent for a while. Eh, we'll get over it. I even, love hey, look, you can't blame Kerrigan. He's been holding it down for you by himself for so long. Well, yeah. And he's been in the league for so long. So he doesn't have to do everything that he's had to do. He has Montez Sweat. He has um, uh, Chase Young. He has guys that he can take breaks and doing all these things. So I'm glad. Look, our defense, I'm, I'm not – I don't have an issue with that. I don't have an issue with our defense. We're struggling, but that we're young. But that offense, man, M McLaren, you got to give him some help. I don't – Gibson, I like – hey, we have, we have a college offense. Is Moses pros. still out there, Morgan Moses? Yeah, he's still out there. He's Banged still out up. there. But he's so poor. Like, we need him. <laughs> he's trying, though, man. I'm telling you. He's trying. Just, just, that's the problem. We got a lot of these teams that have had some just injuries that they just mm – -hmm. Because they can't get right, we just keep throwing them back in there because we need them at the moment. We don't have enough time in the league for if you get hurt, you know, an airline, whatever, something small, yeah. something. You, you don't have enough time to get yourself together. They would have put a shot in your leg and you're back out there. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, Sheldon. Sheldon, hold up, <laughs> hold on. Y'all, okay, y'all are maybe a couple games out of the Super Bowl with the Ravens. Y'all are like the second or third best team in the league, and we held you to 31 points, and you scored late? Sheldon, what else? What happened with what? Um, Kansas City? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, Let me, stop uh, it. My uh, friend, uh, I, no. I, I try to keep my friend quiet during these. Like, what happened during <laughs> Kansas City? Oh, no, we're, we're not talking about Kansas City right now. Sheldon, I know, I know. I'm sorry, my friend likes to chime in sometimes. I, I thought you guys let me down, Sheldon, because you missed that that episode when I was saying that, you know, you guys were going to win that, and you let me down. So I ain't, I'm riding the chain right now. I'm off the train of the Ravens right this second. We went, look, I, look, I got it. It is what it is. I like that. <laughs> Look, you ain't got to worry about nothing, Sheldon. You got a quarterback. You got to run it back. You got an O-line. You got a defense. You got a good coach. Honestly, mm -hmm. if the Kansas City Chiefs were not in the league, you guys would be Super Bowl champs. Mm -hmm. But, well, Kansas City and Tennessee, because uh, have you gotten hey, over there? Hey, they may have to worry about them Raider boys coming back Ooh. on. They may have to worry about them Raider boys. Hey, today, man. Heck, we could go all night, but we didn't even talk. Yo, Casey. I know, I know. I know. We got to go. We got to go, but we got so much more to talk about next week, man. We, we, we couldn't get everything down that we wanted to. Like we said, we talked about Dak majority of the show, but 
there's all there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about. So, but shout out to the Raiders, baby, for taking <laughs> down the Super Bowl champs, cutting down their win. Yeah. Well, lose the season because they haven't lost the game until yesterday. But congratulations. Right. Yo, and let, me, let me tell you, let me, let me, let me real quick get at you. So one of the things my mom and my brother noticed, as soon as the game ended, uh, Mr. MVP, Patrick Mahomes, he just walked right into the locker room. I did he notice. I did in. notice Carr looking for him. Right. Carr walked all the way across the field to find him. And look, and you just see him going, you just see Patrick going down steps and leaving. Ah, that wasn't a good move. Ah. We can also talk about another dynamic quarterback considered the GOAT of the league, uh -oh. disrespecting somebody uh -oh. as well. Uh -oh. I, I, I just don't understand these uh -oh. uh, people who are considered the best in the league and uh -oh. disrespecting. You know, I, I mean, I, I didn't want to even mention it, but golly, <laughs> Tom Yo. Brady, not only do these quarterbacks look up to you. Uh oh. And we're going to let the first one pass because when he beat right. you the first time, it was the Super Bowl, and I know you were salty, and the confetti was coming down. I, I know you didn't want to go shake Foles' hands during the Super Bowl, and there was a lot going on. So he probably wasn't even looking for you during the Super Bowl. But this one was blatant. You could have shook his hand. By you walking off the field, Tom Brady, it kind of made you seem like another salty, salty loss that you had. That you got beat fair and square, not knowing it was fourth down. But I digress. Yeah, hold up. Yeah, hold up, Janae. Can we talk about the downs? I know it goes first down, second down, third down. What? What's the next one? I, is, is it fourth? I yeah, don't know. I, you know, when you have four downs, usually you don't think, "Oh, I should have one more for five down." No. 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 I mean, everybody. Hey, but you know, we're not in the league, though, Janae. So what do we know? You know, he's supposed to be the goat. It's the GOAT. The GOAT. You didn't really show GOAT mentality this last game. Yeah. Not knowing what down you're on. I'll give you a pass for that. Whatever. I'm not in the league. Maybe you forgot. You're getting old, okay? You're getting old. But I will say that I did think that it was kind of childish that you walked off and didn't give Foles a handshake. I didn't like that. No. I didn't, I didn't know. I don't get that. Davis said I, I, I expected from Brady. Davis said I expected. Hmm? He was embarrassed. Anton, he was definitely embarrassed. But you do the right thing. Y'all remember when um, Tom Brady and Lamar Jackson shook hands for the first time? You saw that excitement on Lamar Jackson's hand like, I just shook the goat's head. That's how all quarterbacks look at Tom Brady. You are respected by every quarterback in the league. They look forward to shaking your hand. If you would have beat Foles, you would have shook his hand. Exactly. And that's, that's the I problem I have. If you would have won Tom Brady, you would have shook Foles' hand. And that's the problem I have. Because Tom... You're the GOAT. You're, you're the yeah, GOAT. we know your greatness. We know your greatness. And okay, Gabe, maybe you could be a competitor in this and that. But No. You gotta be the. You gotta be take the high road every time. That's what it is. You salty you're, because you didn't know what down it was. Come on. And you had and, and you're stupid. You had a wide open man right in front of you. All you needed that fourth down was like four yards. Yeah. He decided yep. to go for like a 15 yard pass, missed it. Then now you're debating on what down it was. No, you messed up. Yeah. The goal By far. messed up. But you shouldn't have. But you should have shook his hand. That's all I got a problem with. Yeah, I, I got an issue with that. I got an issue with that. And as you can see, Mahomes followed suit. Didn't do it. He didn't shake uh, Carr's hand. I, guys, that's not that's not cool, guys. We're we're in Atlanta teaching uh, sportsmanship and things of that nature. And Tom, and as far as but both of them, Tom and Patrick Mahomes, both of you guys are Super Bowl winning champs. Both of you guys are the top of your profession. And you can't you can't be hospitable and shake somebody's hand because you did something wrong. Guess not. Mm, that's a little uh, uh, it's a little salty. It's okay. Oh, congratulations like to Carr. Congratulations to Foles. You are proving to the world that it's not all any given Sunday. Any given Sunday it can change. Yeah. And the Raiders beat them fair and square. Yeah. Fair and square. Nothing you can say about it. Like in Chicago. <laughs> Be the go yep. fair yep. and square. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs>
Too salty. We don't want to seem like those fans, but we are tired of the same old winners. So yes. it does make us feel good when you guys lose, but it does make us a little bitter. Like, yo, why didn't you shake hands? That's uh, you guys are supposed to be the good players, whatever. Right, right. At the, at the end of the day, we're not taking away from their talent. We're not sitting here saying they're not great or they're not this or not that. But when you are that good, you're held to a higher standard. Okay. Sorry, if you're not gonna, if you're not, gonna, you're if you're expecting the rest of the league and the quarterbacks who are following, like you said, Janae, they're following you, they're following your uh, example, and you're running into the locker room, or you you have your own little presser conference and everything, you have your own thing. You're not, you don't, you don't have to shake hands with folks because you lost. But 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 what happened to Cam in the Super Bowl when Cam was a little bit salty because he lost? Oh, they, they butchered him. They butchered him in the press. That's all I'm saying. I'm well, not, we can go on forever, that. ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Sheldon, thank you so much for tuning in. Nice. David, you know we love when you come on. We got to get you probably every every week, at least right. one time, because yeah. you are just awesome, man. We truly enjoyed this show. Yo, actually, yo, Janae, so actually, we were all talking about that. So, David, so, folks, in the coming weeks, I don't know, and we're going to try to figure it out in the next coming week. We want to do what we did today, where we have David on the show to say – Something similar to uh, remember a uh, Family Guy? It was, yes. Uh, grind what grinds his gears? Like something that he's ticked about. Last week we already know. And guys, watch those videos. We did a video. David his, be on interview. it. David be on it. I'm telling you, that video was great. On he gave everything that was right and wrong about the Dax situation. I hate that he got hurt, but he was spot on. What Anton, happened? Anton, we need you on here sometimes too, baby. Anton, come exactly. on in. Yes. Jeremy, yes. thank you so much for calling in today. Jeremy, that was awesome. Yeah. So, guys, come on. Yo, let's definitely do this. Especially you guys that are on here weekly. Come on and join the show. Call us or just request it. We'll make topics. Next week, we're going to – we'll all be better. I just got off the road. So, next week – and we both just got off the road, matter of fact. Literally. Yeah. So, next week, we'll, we'll actually have more topics. Um, and we'll actually have it where we can sit down. We'll all be set up so we can – call you guys in and do that whole thing because honestly, Danae, this, man, this has been fun. The last two weeks. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, man, I'm telling you, once the season started, man, we've had so much to talk about. Yes. Content has been so... I mean, yeah. just, we can't even fit everything in one show, so I'm so glad yeah. next week is coming. We'll be able to get you guys some more topics, but I'm glad we focused on what we focused on today because Franchise Tag, Dak Prescott, Long-Term Deals, it needed to be talked about. It needed to be talked about. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, hey, real quick, with everything that is going on about COVID, um, guys, if something happens with the season, we're going to still go and talk about what we can talk about. We're going to still keep going. It. This is – what is this? This is episode 11? Yeah. Episode 11. What? See, we're getting – guys, it's it, – it, we, as much as Janae and myself and David as, as the producer, my fiance is the uh, director, as much as we do, it still comes back to you guys because you guys talk back and forth with us. Absolutely. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff that we don't need. Like, there's a lot of stuff that in the midst of the show, whatever notes we have, y'all still can help us and help tell us to give different spins. And Absolutely. that is so perfect. That is so perfect. Absolutely. Man. We truly appreciate our fans. I mean, yeah. you guys have literally been keeping the show active. We genuinely enjoy talking to you guys, and we know y'all like to talk football. So we yeah. will be here next week, 6 o'clock, Monday. Yep. We can't yep. wait to talk about tonight's games, Tuesday night's games, Thursday night's yeah, yeah. games. Woo! Yeah. We got another exciting week of football. Hey, yeah. so we'll see you next week, 6 o'clock. I am Janae Strother. I'm Sean Spencer. And you already know this is Let's <laughs> Talk Football. <laughs> we will see you guys next week, 6 o'clock. Man, one love, stay safe, wear your mask, yeah. baby.